Ghost Swamp. Yeah, that was me. I was seven at the time. I was okay. They fished me out. Island. I've always loved this place. Our island home. The swamp business is the only true tragedy we've had. During the Second World War, the island was full of American soldiers. Yanks, 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 everywhere. They were stationed here. Then, one night, a poor GI, a strange type, whom I knew, drove his tank straight into the quicksand swamp, sank without a trace, and was never found. The children in the area have always told tales about him. The ghost of the GI pulling them in.
He said he saw the ghost here once, when he was very young. Oh, yes, Rick, the youngest Waddy boy. People never knew how sweet he could be. He'd break into my shop and steal all my things. But I'd always catch him. looking up at me and he'd always always beg me please please don't tell uncle he'll kill me if you do but I'd never tell I suppose I should have but I never did I cared for him no one else seemed to I think his mother tried those step uncles. I shouldn't say it, but I don't think his home life was. How long have I lived on the island? My father built the main road through the island in 1926. I was four when my mother and I joined him. So, if I was four in 1926, that makes me...
They built a poxy cinema above that stinking swamp. Can you believe that? Kids over there have been chucking rocks at me all day long. No. Look, look at the filth. I just don't need this. Look, it's all over me. I bought you I don't lunch. have to put up with this. Ta. It's not only that. It's these guys over here. Clowns. They're clowns. They just run around all day, chucking things everywhere. Oh, babe. <laughs> For me? Mm. <laughs> like that, babe, hey? <laughs> What the hell is this? I don't know. I don't know, really. What is it, babe? Nothing to worry about. It's just an old hat. All right? This is made in the USA. I thought I'd seen them before. Maybe a marking down here. Got a name on it? Amazing, no rush. And I was thinking of that dumb GI bastard down below.
on it. Come out and play. No. I want the chocolate. Rick? Oh, thanks. Rick! Yes, I knew that was going on. We on the island all knew. We could have helped that child. We could have. This has changed a lot, so I've been told. Dang, worse than shit. And it was down there. And it was licking 
my fate. And, and it was, it was gripping my legs. And it's tongue was all over my feet. First, a two 
sure. Charville was once a great western town, and people on vast cattle and sheep stations. Land sold for one cent an acre. Now it's got up to two dollars an acre. Old cubiels, antiques, old typewriters, old lamps, old telephones. Mr. Hopson. A train driver used to live here alone. A well-known chap in these parts. But strange, he never spoke. He was the main driver in this region for 50 years. Then one day, while in his 80s, he went missing. There was a search party up and down the river here. Something had happened in his past. Something haunted him. Be devil he was. He couldn't live with it anymore. They found him hanging from that. Chew, chew, chew. They hear him, but they can't see him. Wait, there is someone, an old alcoholic called Mickey. Go and see him. He knows the train story. He might be in the hose by now, but he can yarn old Mickey. <laughs> Try to tell us something. I try to work it out. I believe in these things. I also believe in the hovercrafts. I mean the UFOs. They've been in our family for years. Nothing. Ah, those kids. Where? There. When we lived out here, strange things would happen. Sometimes we'd see these things in the sky. Our old people would call them Min Min lights. Those old Murray people. They never knew what they were, and neither did we. They just used to come. The Min Min lights, they just used to come.
Then there was this little girl who had like this. But first, let me tell you about my husband. Once, when he was coming home from a hunt, Geez, Jack, you finished early. Not to worry, Kaz. Plenty of time. Great job, Jack. Now fix it. Yep, yep, brother. We're just about to do it now. It's getting a bit late.
Did you hear that? What? Keep the heat in, Marty. Oh, well. You can see the girls and I have been busy. This is a wild pig being cooked underground. We've already marinated it overnight in juniper berries, wine and fresh herbs. Herbs of this area. We've stuffed the pig with bush onions, and we'll serve it with sweet potatoes and yam. But while we're waiting on it, we've got the entree happening. is a yabby. It's very much like a freshwater prawn or shrimp. The flavour though is a lot stronger. We're tossing them around here in some canola oil, a pinch of chilli and garlic. Oh, sorry. Of course. Time. telling them that she can't cook it now, but we'll take it home and she'll make it into a snake terrine, served with our walnut vinaigrette. Just a common hollandaise, actually.
What you got there, sis? Ha, oh, I've caught in a beer. the firecrackers off Ronnie because he's a very dangerous boy. Oh, is he just? I know that horse came home. Ah, that woman that is a horse. Where's my money? Some behold him, be devil he was.
on the tracks by that train driver. Blind. She was blind. Her and her family used to live in this house before we moved in. Man, she used to drive me crazy when she'd come. She's here! She's here! Welcome to what will be Dimitri's Casino Marina. It's still here! What's in a matter of speak? Hey, why is it coming down? Uh, believe me, guys, it is coming down. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> Athens wasn't built in a day, eh, Georgie? Guys, friends of my son, in fact. Ma? What is there? Why did she play the smoke? Who smoke? Ah, Imelda. Why is Imelda always sad? No, Betty Moore. It's not for you to know. Well, perhaps you could know. Let me tell you about Imelda. You know she's not from around here. She's from the Torres Strait Islands. 
Her people are still quite traditional in their ways, especially concerning things like marriage. Imelda had a son. Beb. He was her only child. She was never the same after he died. It's just a bit of a log jam. It doesn't matter. That we trust you to do it. The alderman that I made the donation to... Doesn't matter. Well, he just forgot. You know what councillors no, like, George? No, no, no. Look, the alderman has let me down. No, we did no, the no, catering no, no, no. for his delay, daughter's 21st. He delays here. We'll but get the, the, the <laughs> development application approved and then the building application will be approved and this will be ruined. Mate, there will it's be nothing delay. here. It's a big delay. What was that? Who was that? Well, that's a nice... Is that the latest model of her? Call you back. I asked you if you still had anyone living there, Dimitri. <laughs> I, I can what, see. What's how this, you Dimitri? Would get... uh, 24 hours and they're out of here. 24 hours tops. You had trouble here a while back. Yeah, I remember. It was in the paper. See, look. What, what trouble? Guys, I, I can explain the whole situation. No shit, Dimitri. Let's go. Okay, okay, okay. There were these two kids from up north, uh, from the islands, I think. Beva was this islander dude, and Minnie this hippie chick. But, guys, we're going 12 years back. These kids, they were in a bad way. They needed work, so I put them on. Oh, you are so nice, Dimitri. Nice, I'm nice. <laughs> yeah, he's a real nice bastard. It was about marriage. The whole clan were down on them. They had to get the hell out. And then the mother, Imelda, came looking for them. Found them down here. Jeez, what a fuss she caused. I want to see the contract, Dimitri. And then, after Imelda moved in with them, that's when things got really strange. Dimitri, we're not interested in your story now because you always are very Back? Shit, I would have only been two years old. Don't swear. Yes, you were only a baby. Give me the rest tomorrow. your beautiful Wula. I hear you kids are doing well at high school, Dimitri. <laughs> Don't know him. Never seen him. Ah! Never seen him before Dimitri, in my life. Dimitri, my man. I want to thank you for looking after my auntie. 
She'll never want to leave this place. And it's because of you. You're so kind. I love you, Swag people. Do you hear me? I'm to you, Melda. It's all part of a traditional squatter's farewell ceremony. Uh, uh, tomorrow, guys. Tomorrow's the day, eh? Yes, yes. <laughs> you owe me rent. You don't even listen to me. No. I'm not having an affair with Trotsky. I know you think I am. But I'm not. What about you? Who are you seeing? Don't deny it. I've seen you with her. What number is she? Sing me, boy. It's okay, you know, because I used to have a boy, a son, Beba, 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 Nimi Kamayar Sik, Nisenaka. Nino akana lo mai ka, nino akana kawa mai ginga, nino akana ngulai mai alagia, nai gai pude magare, beba nimi ka mai arsi.
I'm not having an affair with Kotsky. Hey, boy. I know you think I'm. You've been watching me. But I'm not. What number is she? I know. I seen you watching me, boy. If you'd only listen to me. We didn't know what to do about all the bloody fighting with Beba and Mini. Your father was going to sack them the next day. You'll be right. You'll be right. Let's go.
Έλα, παιδί μου. Τι να κάνω.
I'll just go and check that noise out. Yes, that's a good idea, darling. Shh, you'll wake the bloody kid. The bloody kid's 14, darling. I know he's bloody 14. I know that. Hmm. Yeah. 